To start off the program, I would like to invite Dr. Amir Ayub, who's a consultant cardiologist in Manchester, uh, to give a bit of background of FAMS. He's the founder who started uh, FAMS charity in 2006 and has worked tirelessly through the years to bring FAMS to where it is at present. It wouldn't be possible without his efforts. Uh, saying that, Recently on, on Facebook, I've been seeing a keen interest in bullish poetry, so maybe you can question him on that as well. Thank you very much, everyone. And uh, friends, Kalbuski, thank you very much. I'm absolutely delighted to have you here. Uh, just want to give you a brief resume about FAMS, because this is the first time we are doing uh, this uh, event in London. Um, People in Manchester uh, know FAMS by heart now. I think they have, uh, we have been doing it every year on annual dinner. Uh, just to, as like I said, this was this 2006. Actually, it was the end of 2006 and beginning of 2007. Uh, it started with one student. I was in Pakistan in Rawalpindi Medical College where I graduated. And I was approached by one of my colleagues who said, uh, can you help uh, a student? And I said, what's the problem? I said, well, you know, financially they cannot support themselves and one student is in desperate need of help. It was a girl student. And that was a new thing for me because I think uh, doctors sitting here with me, Sohail and everyone would realize that when we were there, it was, yes, we were used to pay the fee, but it wasn't that much. So I went to see the principal of Royal Pindy Medical College and he said that this girl came into my office uh, and this chair that you are sitting in, she wept tears in her eyes and said that uh, if I don't get the fee, uh, I just walk out of the college uh, because the rule is you have to pay the fee. And she was from one of the most remote parts of the Punjab uh, near Multan. So I came back, uh, decided to help, uh, decided got a few friends around and launched this charity financial assistance for medical students. Um, got it registered in 2008, but before that um, we s collected the money from our friends and sent the fee for this girl to start her medical school training. We had a son of a rickshaw driver from Lahore. He got admission in Rawal Pinti Medical College. His mother came along with him and said to the head of the scholarship committee, my husband drives a rickshaw, we hardly make two ends meet. If you can find some way of supporting my son, otherwise I'm taking him back. He will drive rickshaw. This is the problem. From 2007 to 2014, it has three components the students have to pay, the tuition fee, the hostel fee, the mess fee, as you can see, starting from 30 to 2000, gone up 2013 to 14 to 92,000. Now, 92,000 or 600 per year. This is per year that a student has to pay. 600 pounds or 550 pounds, depending upon the exchange rate, per year, which covers all this. So that comes out, if you say, roughly 3,000 pounds to make one student a doctor. We cannot walk alone, and as we walk, we must make a pledge that we always march ahead. We cannot turn back, and as FAMS team, we've made a pledge that we will walk forward and we will take as many disadvantaged brilliant students forward with us as we can. And we would like each and every one of you to join us in that pledge. We can all make a difference. Your being here today makes a difference. And we can all do, you know, every little thing counts. Uh, we might not think it matters, but it does matter. It doesn't have to be a big donation. It doesn't have to be sponsoring the student through the whole course. Whatever you can do counts. 
We go to McDonald's with kids, you know, we spend 50, 60 pounds, you know, in one evening. And that's how much you need per month to sponsor a child through medical education in Pakistan. Now, I would like to invite Dr. Bushra Chowdhury to come and tell us a little bit about how the selection process works. She's GP principal in Salford and is also an undergraduate tutor for the University of Manchester Medical School and has a keen interest in education. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, distinguished guests, I'm just going to talk to you today about the selection process that we use at FAMS and also give you a progress report. At FAMS, we pride ourselves on having a very robust selection process. Students are invited in their medical colleges to apply for the scholarship, and these are then shortlisted by a scholarship selection committee. The committee will then interview the applicants and send us the successful applicants for FAMS to consider. The Executive Council and Board of Trustees in the UK will then agree the final applicants. Um, now I'd like to invite Dr. Huma Gauri. She's a GP partner in Central Manchester practice, a GP trainer and an aesthetic doctor. She's going to tell us about how your funds help us achieve the goals that we do. I want to talk today about the fate of the funds. I want to concentrate on one, on one or two particular individuals that have come through the programme. So let me introduce you to Dr Ali Heather. He graduated from Rawalpindi Medical College in 2012. Shortly before he got into medical college, he had no funds whatsoever. His father was a cleaner and his mother didn't work. Becoming a doctor was an unachievable ambition for him and FAMS was his last attempt to try and get into medical school. He was successful on the FAMS program and this young man started to make a difference even before he graduated. Come on, next slide. Whilst he was a medical student, he was on his surgical attachment and he realised that there were lots of unnecessary deaths simply due to lack of blood. So what this medical student did was he set up a medical student blood donation clinic, leading from the front and donating at least 10 times himself while he was a student. Shortly after he graduated, he set up the Rawalian Flood Relief Fund. He was a founder member of this fund. And what this fund did was, together with other healthcare professionals, they were a mobile medical unit which toured up and down the northwest frontier and the Punjab, delivering essential medical care and emergency medical treatment. For some people, this was the first time they had ever seen a medical professional. And apart from delivering the emergency medical treatment, they also provided basic things that we take for granted in this country, like immunizations, wound dressings, simple, effective, and save many lives. Apart from doing this and working incredibly long shifts, he was a tireless fundraiser. He went from door to door, shop to shop, after work, just collecting a few rupees from people willing to donate for this flood relief fund. He's graduated now and he's also supporting two other students who are in fi financial hardship. He works as a junior doctor in Peshawar and he's studying for his postgraduate part one exams. Uh, I would like to invite Dr. Sohail Chuktai, who's an orthopaedic consultant and director of Apex Television, to come and say a few words. Thank you very much for giving an opportunity to speak on that. And I welcome Prince Marek Kaspersky and Petrina, Princess Petrina Kaspersky to have joined us today. It's a very long flight. You've just landed, and you've kindly taken up uh, the request to come here. I, I knew that Amir Ayub is doing something 
which would interest you. I have, I'm passionately involved, I want to get involved more with his work. The reason being is a small story. I was assistant professor in Fatma Jinnah Medical College and I went back from here, took a post in Pakistan. And one day in the clinic, a chap limped into my clinic and he had an arm fracture, humerus fracture, which was mal united, <clears throat> badly united. So he had some nerve effects. So he came in in pain and he sat in front of me. I started examining him and he kept looking at my face. And uh, I didn't notice why he was uh, looking at my face, but once I finished, I said, this is the treatment, come and see me next time. He smiled and he slowly started walking back. And then I said, stop, are you my class fellow? We were together in the school. He, he has tears in his eyes, he said yes. I asked my registrar to come and just see a few more patients. I took him inside <clears throat> and I said, you topped the college. And he was, we were together, either I was second or first, and in three years time, we had kind of jigsaw between us. So this guy, he topped the class that day, that, that, that time, and we knew he's, he's gonna make laurels in the history of whatever he, touch, whatever he touches. He was very talented. He couldn't make it to the college. I didn't know what happened, but you know, life is busy. It's our short sighted, we don't see what's happening around, uh, around us. I kept on. I did ask him what happened. He said, my father died after my FSC or all A levels, and I had no income. I had to support my young sister. So I started doing a shop. That failed, I did a rickshaw. That failed, I went into wood business. And now I'm doing a wood business. So I was coming out of my shop, I was hit by a car, and I fractured my arm. I couldn't afford my treatment. And this was the guy I envied. <clears throat> I said, teach me, in, in my, I remember in OA levels, once I took a tuition from him privately, because he could teach me. And I was assistant professor in medical college. This guy couldn't make it. What's, what's, what's that? What is the injustice? And now we are in a position to do something about it. And thank you for expressing so much support. This work, I mean, I will put the first, first drop. I will support a student. And it's actually an opportunity you have given to us. I don't think we are doing anything of enormous scale. It's you are doing something very special and giving us an opportunity. <laughs> and this is the beginning. And I'm sure there are many people around who would come forward and help you with this project. I offer you TVAPEX complete logistic support. If you want to do success stories, we have an IP address in Pakistan Node. We can give you the live cameras there. You can have more people, students talk to the world, tell FAMS is doing this for us. Let's get the message around. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you very much. Now I'd like to invite His Serene Highness Prince Marek Kaspersky of Poland, Vice Grand Master of the Companionate of White Swan, recognizing outstanding achievements from people across the globe and passion is to use technology to assist people, to assist education, to come and say a few words for us. I didn't know anything about FAMS three days ago until Sahail asked me to come tonight and learn a little bit more. Um, I am very passionate in teaching uh, children or people, especially people who are disadvantaged by remoteness um, or uh, some sort of difficulty. So it's an area that's of interest to me. Uh, my wife Petrina and I are very honoured uh, to be here tonight, very much so. So we find it very difficult to make a comment about FAMS because until a little while ago we knew very little about it. Uh, I was interested to read about it on your website um, and very, very interested to read about or, or hear tonight about what you're doing. But one thing I can tell you or can comment is just by looking around at what I see tonight. Let's face it, we're all busy. Everyone seems to be more and more busy especially professional people, and I suspect that counts for almost everyone in this room. 
Life is getting much harder than it used to be in years, years gone by. Before, we had iPhones, iPads, Facebook, Twitter, MySpace, Roomba, robot vacuum cleaners, and cable TV. There's barely enough time to update one's Facebook. In a more primitive era, let's say 1989, life was less complicated. People had much more time to show appreciation and consideration towards others. I doubt there are a few people here that are less busy than they were 25 years ago. Our lives are hectic. There's not even enough time to be nice to people we encounter. Or is there? Just think of what the world would be like if we could take the effort to just slow down, to hold the door open for somebody behind us, or just to say thank you for somebody who did something kind to us. But here you all are. You're giving up your valuable time to support others. Students you've never met, yet you're here supporting them. Your efforts tonight and your continuing efforts will make a difference. Not only make a difference to the life of one student, hopefully more, but ultimately improve the well-being of their community and also each of the, the lives that contribute to that community. So this evening I see it as investing in the future. So we have been listening to some wonderful comments by other people, Nelson Mandela and those, and I really like that, and I'm going to finally just say some words from Anne Frank. And she said, no one has ever become poor by giving. Thank you very much. I'm very interested to know why there seems to be so many people who need help from the most remote community. This is a very much interest to me. Is it because these, um, uh, these students have so much to gain because of their remoteness, because of their difficulty in life? Do you have any idea why so much, uh, so many of these students come from such remote this, areas? This has um, amazed us um, as well, um, especially myself, because as I said, when I was a, a medical student, we had our class fellows coming from some areas, but they were in very small numbers. The only way I can answer this question is, and I, the way I have studied it, is that there is an increased awareness in the remote areas of Pakistan now for students to gain knowledge to study, to acquire education. I don't know whether it's because of these mobile phones, the internet cafe which have opened up, they go on Google, they see these medical schools, they say, oh, we can achieve that. And I think the, there has been uh, an inflow of this um, information. This information technology has caused an awareness in Pakistan in the remote areas. Even in villages where they may not be having the electricity, that they go on the generators, uh, stuff like that. And then they go on these computers, they go on the Google, they see how much is available. They want to come forward. I think the, 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 what you have seen here in the presentation is because these either these parents are motivating them, the girls are coming forward, they are refusing to say, okay, just because we are girls from a remote or a primitive area, we are going to compete. They are competing. And I think it's the awareness. It's just an increased awareness from the information technology, which has caused this um, this uh, dam sort of a bursting now. As a just suggestion, I would like to uh, present the fan shield to uh, Prince Kalswar, please. And I would like uh, CEO of the Heavy Bank, uh, Mr. Anwar to come in, and if you can present this to Thank you.
I've come here tonight to hear about FAMS because I've known very little about it. Um, I was absolutely astounded to know how much good work is being done by a few people to change the lives of not only students but their communities and I'd very very much like to see this support grow. I do support it very much and it's a, a, a wonderful project and uh, I'd like to see it grow very much. I think it has been an incredible response from London. As you know, this was our first event in London, um, and uh, we didn't know much uh, of the crowd here, but uh, we spread our word to the Facebook, and the emails, and our mutual friends who are settled in London, and it has been an amazing response. You can see that the hall was full. The question and answer session went on and on because people were so much interested with this work. And, and, and we are very much encouraged and inspired by this thing uh, that people have taken so much interest in our, our program in London and we intend to come back here um, and have a bigger gatherings than this. <laughs> 